Hey guys, Craig with How to Pest. Today we're going to show you another instructional video. This one's going to be fun. It's going to be how to sing Christmas carols. Ready? Go. Kidding. We're going to show you how to use Avion Roach Gel Bait. I have a couple other products out here. We'll come back to those later if you're wondering why we have those out there. And let's show you how to use this great roach uh, gel bait that we have right now. So you're going to have your actual syringe itself. You're going to have your plunger and you're going to have your tip. Real simple to use out of the pack. Unscrew the cap, screw your tip on, plunger, you're good to go. When you put this roach gel bait out, it's only going to be about the size of a thumbtack. Real tiny. It does not take a lot to lure them in and to kill the cockroaches themselves. So, we also have here cardboard strips. The reason we like cardboard strips, you can put the bait on these and then remove them when you're done. If you absolutely have to put it in cracks and crevices where the cardboard strip won't go, you can do that also, it's fine. This just allows you to remove it without having to scrape it off if you do see it. You're trying to tuck it back in there where you don't see it, out of sight, out of mind. The cockroaches will find it. Um, stoves, this is a big area that we're pointing out right now because they will hide behind here. It's got the grease, it's got crumbs, it's got all that good stuff from all those years of cooking. Cabinets, we always bait the cabinets. We usually place it again on a cardboard strip, little dot, we set it in the corners both shelves. You've got to do your work and you got to cover the area and you'll have real good success wiping out your roaches. Hinges. If you have a real bad population, you're going to find them in the hinges. You open the door, you'll see them come out of the hinges. So once again, if you want to get a little squirt inside the hinge or you want to put it on the cardboard, you can also take these, and we've done this in the past, we'll put a little double-sided tape on there if you need to stick them to areas like this. Once again, pulls off when you're done and just discard it into the trash. Refrigerators, this is another big one for us. We like to slide the refrigerator out. We like to get down into a compressor area down below where the motor and the wires are. You'll find them hiding back in there. If you get really bad, you're actually gonna find them in the weather stripping around the actual freezer and fridge itself. And it's okay to put it back in there also. Um, this all, once again, just depends on how bad your situation is. So you want to cover your bases and just get every area you can think of to get this gel out. Cabinet tops. You want to get underneath, get down low, and find those gaps where they've actually laid the stone or your countertop on top of the cabinets and get it up into there a little bit. Stoves, same thing. They're going to be hiding even in the stoves, cracks and crevices of the stoves. Microwaves, another big one. You want to pop that open. If it's really bad, you're going to find them in there. You're going crack and crevice of the microwave. Just little dots here and there, or cardboard strips like we showed you in the past. Um, you don't want them actually in the microwave itself. The edges, that's where you're going to find them. Sinks, another big one for us. When we do a sink job, excuse our mess, this is my kitchen we're showing you. We want to make it as real as possible. And this is our Corgi, uh, Frank here, he loves to just hang out when we do videos. Um, pipes, pipes that come in from the wall, any uh, outlet around the area down there and any uh, pipe that's coming from the dishwasher. And then last but not least, the dishwasher is another big one for us. You're always gonna have a gap around that. You wanna get a little bit in those little cracks where the dishwasher sits back in there because they will live in there. It's moist, it's wet, it's insulated. It's just a great hiding spot for the roaches and a great place for them to breed. If you need to go up on areas of countertops, it's always best to have it on the cardboard strip. Outlets themselves, you can bait them, but the best way to do an outlet is dust. Delta dust is a great product. You're going to have to spend some time, pop off the flathead screw, put a small little squirt of dust in there. It's tiny. You just want the dust to get in there and float. You don't want that dust to just be sitting there in a pile in a clump. So outlets for sure, because you'll find them coming out of there. So that's where you're going to put this uh, roach gel bait. It's a great product to use, guys. Um, now let me take you back to the front over here and I want to explain to you why we have these other products out here. So along with the Roach Gel, you can see that we have a product called Gentrol and a product called Alpine. Let me explain to you what these are. Alpine is our general pest control. This is our general knockdown, our kill. This is a non-repellent. What that means is I'm not going to contaminate this bait. So anytime you put this out, one of the main things is you don't want to contaminate this bait. If you contaminate the bait, they're not going to go for it. So if you put out something that you bought over the counter, and it's uh, it, most of those are not going to be non-repellents, first of all. So if you put those out, they're going to contaminate that bait, and you're not going to have success when you put this out. 
So you want to use a product like Alpine WSG. It's a non-repellent, which means they don't know it's there and it's not contaminated in the bait. Along with the, uh, the Alpine, we put the Gentrol. We're mixing these two together. We sell these in um, already one ounce bottles. They dump into one gallon of water. Same with the Alpine WSG, so you get that perfect mix. One packet, one of these, that's gonna be a gallon mixture. More than enough for a kitchen to spray for roaches. The Gentrol is an IGR. It's an insect growth regulator. What that means, it disrupts the insect growth cycle. So they're gonna basically, the short version is they're gonna, they're gonna reproduce deformed. It's gonna stop that cycle and stop them from breeding into your kitchen. So as a pest control operation, when we go out, we don't wanna come back. We wanna hammer this with everything we can that we have in our arsenal. And that's why we go with Alpine and we go with Gentrol. If you have a, uh, a roach situation in your kitchen and it's not too out of control, and I, I guess I would say even if it is out of control, this will do the job for you. You just have to be thorough and make sure you spend that time to get this gel bait in the areas we showed you and anywhere else they might be. And it's just little thumb-sized dots here and there or on cardboard and you're good to go. It's a process that works fairly fast. Once they get a hold of it, you'll start seeing dead ones. Um, but if you do have a problem that you think, hey, this is just out of control and I want to nuke this kitchen with everything I got, then I would recommend your Alpine and your Gentrol in conjunction with this. So basically how we do it is we mix these two together, we spray all those areas first that I just told you about, and then cracks and crevices, and then we come back and we bait on top of that, and then we dust the outlets if need be. And there you have it. That's how to knock out a roach population in your kitchen and anywhere else you may have it. If you have any questions, get a hold of us, howtopest.com. Thanks, guys. Happy holidays.